Welcome to uh, Power Beyond the Grave. Uh, I'm going to wait for you guys to uh, uh, join. I think you guys know that um, more than a few. Well, we have a, we have one big surprise guest, and then we have Melanie coming on. Melanie Liebird, uh, who obviously played Carrie Milgram. What's up, Mark Dark? I see you. Um, and uh, we have some other another guest. Uh, coming on. Oh, hi, Sheila. <laughs> I owe you a text message. Um, so uh, we have some great questions, obviously, and uh, we just have a, like a whole bunch of things to talk about. Uh, and I guess there are some bigger questions. I will say that everyone who's going to join us today, all their characters are really dead. <laughs> so there should be no confusion about that because I know that was coming up. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to start. Oh, hey, wait, before I get started, I did want to say to you guys, thank you so much again for the amazing numbers that we had for the uh, season finale of Ghost and for Force. I know a lot of you guys are watching Force and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being fans. Um, and oh my goodness, there's a versus battle right now. I didn't know. I haven't been on IG. I'm prepping uh, for, uh, something else with Netflix right now. And I haven't been, been paying attention. So, um, <laughs> showtime.bgb. Please tell these people again, they think everybody's still alive. Everybody is not still alive. Like I feel bad. Not everybody is still alive. You guys, <laughs> some people are dead for real, for real. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna answer a few questions. Uh, so, um, we're gonna go for, from there. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Um, she Loves Bennett asked, says, um, Monet threatened to kill Carrie in season one. Uh, did Carrie actually believe she'd do it? Yes, I think Carrie did believe that she would do it, but I also think that Carrie thought she was smarter than Monet, which is a little bit of a class bias. She knew she was, uh, that Monet was sort of, you know, scary, right, and intense. But Carrie, uh, you know, she made a couple of mistakes. Uh, I will say, you guys, that, um, the mistakes that Carrie made, and we'll talk to Melanie about this too, but the mistakes that Carrie made are um, mistakes that a lot of smart people make, where they think they can think their way out of situations. It's not always the case, right? Uh, so there we have it. Um, mm, wow Business asks, will there be accountability for Carrie and Zeke's deaths? Yes. Yes, there will. I don't know if uh, the right people will get that accountability. I'm not sure that the accountability is gonna fall necessarily on the people who actually did it. It's power after all. It's so rare that someone, you know, someone kills someone and then they get arrested for that and it's exactly what is supposed to happen. That's not really what we do. So, you know, <laughs> but there will be uh, some, you know, some, as I like to say, consequences and complications. Uh, a couple questions here. Um, with me going to Netflix, does that mean I'm done with power? I mean, technically, I'm still an executive producer, and uh, I do talk to the cast. I love them so much. I was just on the phone uh, yesterday, two days ago, I think, with Woody um, McLean, who plays Kane. But I'm not, um, I'm not there day to day. I am busy, focused on Netflix stuff, for sure. Um, okay, let's see. Gosh, there's so many questions. I do want to tell you guys. I got so many questions this year that were people actually guessed what we were gonna do. And so that is just like super exciting. <laughs> I have to say it's like super, super exciting. Um, DS Hamburger asks, when is Raising Canaan coming back? I don't have a date, but I, I can tell you they are shooting the finale right now. We had to push, um, we had to push part of the season because of COVID. Uh, that whole Omicron surge made us have to delay shooting the beginning of Ghost season three and take a break in the middle of shooting Raisin Canaan season two. It's gonna be on a little later um, as a result, but like a tiny bit. And I think it's actually more gonna affect the second half of the season, but not that much. Thank you for the, that person who said, uh, that person who said force is lit. Oh, uh, Miranda Baker, completely off topic with those walls or butter, is that lacquer? No, it's not, <laughs> it's flat paint. Um, this room, when I, when I, actually bought this house. This room was dark gray. It was like the man, the, like the husband's office. And so I had to, you know, feminize it a little bit. Oh, Gianni, Gianni just said she's not done with power. Gianni, I'm never done with you, sweetheart. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, my cousin's in here. Corey underscore Buffalo. That's my cousin, Corey. Uh, we are like minutes apart, I think, like six months apart. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, all right. 
I'm glad that everybody's saying hi, Gianni, because Gianni is amazing. Okay, how much did you guys love the uh, the halftime show? Like, <laughs> I did not expect there to be so much love for like the power crossover, and that was amazing. That whole like Monet and Kanan, do they know each other? My favorite meme was the guy who said Kanan's still alive and he knows Monet. That would be amazing. Okay. Oh, this is great. I am Monster Black. I noticed that Ghost was having hallucinations of people whose deaths he felt responsible for. Tariq is having the same type of experiences. Is he going to die too? Are our Effie and Kane going to be the, the shooters? I mean, man, I have a question for you. Do you really think we're going to kill off Tariq? Like, right away? Like, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. It totally could happen. But I don't think we're going to do that anytime soon. Just waiting. I'm coming. I'm here. Are you there? You're <laughs> I'm telling you, it's something. Of, like, is that like a crib? Well, now, see, these feel, when I get on, this is happening to me every time. My eyes become, hold on, hold on. Let me find out what's going on here. It's this filter thing. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm, st I'm stuck on this filter. I don't even know how to get it off. Oh, my God. You look so cute, though. Thank you, but this you look is not really how I look. I really need to just find the right filter. I'm literally stuck on the, I, I don't know, my phone is stuck. Hi, everybody. So everybody, surprise guest, power from beyond the grave. It is the one and only Lala Anthony, played, who played Lakeisha. Hi. I am wearing my Anala sweatshirt today. I saw that. That looks That's so, right, girl. so good. Yes, thank you for that. Oh, I'm so excited because we have edge problems right now. We have edge see? problems. I did not put on edge controls. Morning so and night. I keep telling everybody, morning and night, and they will definitely come back for sure. Oh, they need to. Because, I mean, those of you who are fans, you know, this girl wore braids for, what, four, five years straight? The edges are not set. But I love your hair. Everybody compliments your hair. I love how you wear your hair. Thank you so That's much. So I appreciate good. that. I, um, I'll tell you, I had a journey like a lot of black women, which is that I didn't do my hair. Mm -hmm. And then when, because uh, I like to keep it in braids. And then when the p pandemic happened, I was like, okay, let me research. Let me figure out how to do that. I'm literally trying to figure, oh, I think I figured out the filter thing. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it'd be so great to see your real face. I <laughs> no, this is, Chris, somebody say you look like you went heavy on the Botox. I'm like, what? Okay, wait, I, I, think, I think I figured it out. I love you so oh. much. Okay. There you are. Here I am. There's your okay. real face. Hi, guys. <laughs> wow, that gets okay. crazy. It happened to me before. I'm so happy to be on here with you because I always come in and watch and, you know, comment and talk and everything. And I love, you know, your recaps and just hearing, you know, how that mind of yours works. Like, I'm, you know, whenever we go out, obviously we have fun, but it's like, an interview I'm like what made you think of this why'd you write that what happened there you know, you know how I get I do okay so I want to say a couple things first of all for those of you who don't know Lala is my real friend this is my actual motherfucker like this is <laughs> this is one of my road dogs she knows everything about me <laughs> we just kind of just and vice get versa. It together. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I admire most about you is how serious you are about your business and it is true that you always ask me a lot of questions and they're about business. So the first thing I want to ask you today is where did this come from? Because this oh. is such a genius, brilliant idea. Thank you. So it came from during the pandemic, I finally stopped and looked at my hair and realized that my hair was in a fucked up condition because we're wearing braids, weaves, lace fronts, what, whatever extensions and nobody's paying attention to their real hair. It's like, as long as the wig looks good, I'm good. As long as the braids look good, I'm good. And finally, when we had to strip all of that down. I was like, my hair is in really bad condition. So I kept seeing on YouTube and all these places, everyone talking about rice water. And I was like, I want to experiment it. So I started making rice water at home, like letting it ferment and doing the whole thing and seeing amazing results. So I was like, how do I take that and put it in a bottle for like everyone to be able to use it? So I mixed it with like biotin and arginine and the results are crazy. These things are like flying just off the shelf so to speak like people really want to take care of their hair so this is it right here that's how it came about and i've seen it do wonders for my own hair especially me because i think i wear ponytails more than anyone on the planet earth and literally my edges are just like this just pull back all day long and they're just getting pulled pulled constantly yeah no of course i mean i love a ponytail in fact i will just share with those of you who uh, care about these things there are some straight pieces here in the front. That's because I wore ponytails, like snatched back so much. Mm -hmm. I lost my curl pattern. 
for part yeah. of it, right? And so I'm going to, I'll be starting to apply my anal and I'll come on and we'll see. We'll see yeah, the so results. we can see the results. I'll that's so, that's so <laughs> good. And thank you so much for everyone who's been supporting. Like, I'm just so excited for people to start. It takes like two weeks to start seeing like some results. So you got to stick with it like anything, anything else. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, okay. So next thing is I want you to talk, I mean, First of all, tell me, because I'm sure that the power fans want to know, mm -hmm. how was the experience of sort of dying on power and the, the aftermath? Because we are talking about beyond the grave. So for me, um, it was a mix of emotions. Like power became and still is such an important part of my life. I was on power for six seasons, as a lot of people know. So it's like you spend six seasons of your life around the same people. You become a, a family for real. It's not just work. They know We've seen people get married. We've seen people have kids. We've seen people get divorced. We've seen all kinds of things happen like this. A lot happens in the course of six seasons. So you grow as a family. So when it was over, the emotional side was just being sad that like I'm leaving my family, but I realized the relationships and bonds we formed, like it didn't change because I wasn't, you know, on power anymore. When they're strong, it doesn't matter. And I still keep in touch with, you know, the cast and the crew and obviously you and the bonds are there, but it was emotional filming that scene because it was like my best friend was killing me in this scene and there was so much power and emotion behind it. Like the choice she had to make to actually pull the trigger and me pleading, Lakeisha pleading like, please don't do this and saying, what about Cash? Like, what about my son? Like that just hit me so deep. Cayenne's upstairs right now. So it's like, you know, just having a child and what that would even feel what that would even feel like and that scene took us you remember that was what like 14 hours to 14 shoot. hours over, yeah it was not over, it was not a short over. day for sure no it's over and um we just had to keep, keep doing it and you had to dig deep every single time but i always remember 50 telling me he's like you know when you leave a show he said you want to and and i'm sure you can attest to this because you wrote it but he was saying like you want to leave in a memorable way. Like you wanna to leave to where people will always talk about it and, and and remember it. It's different when power, the original power just went off and all of a sudden Lakeisha just kind of goes off into the sunset. It's like, oh, I wonder what would happen with them. But like the way I, my character left, people will always remember that and always talk about that. And even now with all the spinoffs and all the success, because I'm obsessed with every single spinoff power has taken over my whole still t has, has taken over my whole life even in the aftermath but it's <laughs> like people still talk about it and even now when i watch force and i see some of the flashbacks and pictures of of my character and tommy it brings it all back so it's like it'll always be such an important part of my life but i'm glad that my character left in a way that will always keep people talking like remember that remember when that happened that was crazy like i love that you gave me such an incredible exit to you know such a huge part of my career and my life oh well first of all you were amazing on the show second of all shout out to 50 because 50 is the one who said lala should play this part mm -hmm. he was like this is it and i had seen you in uh what was it was it um think like a man mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. and i was like oh my goodness i really want to work with her and he was like no this is it and so shout out to 50 yeah. for that second thing i definitely want to say is because I said it on one of these lives, I don't know if you were watching that live, but like, had I known that we were gonna do force, mm -hmm. I would not have killed Lakeisha. I would have kept I heard, you I heard when you said that. I was watching <laughs> that. I was watching that one. I was like, but you know what? Let me, let me say something too for the actors that are in the room, because so many actors are here and producers and directors. I do think that it is important to be able to play, you know, different roles and I'm glad I got that experience as much as I love Lakeisha I would have just been Lakeisha for forever you know what I mean and I'm glad that I've been able to experiment with different roles and really have fun with just different characters so I'm grateful for that of course I would just love to still you know be a part of it but I'm grateful that I was able to play some different characters and just play around with different things because Lakeisha just became so much of my life and so much like people don't realize what goes into these characters you don't just come to work and get the script that day and just say some lines like it literally takes over your whole life and her feelings and emotions and whatever was going on with her and tommy it's like you take it home with you look at look at you with the scripts you eat breathe sleep that stuff like sometimes you're like i gotta shake it off because it becomes your whole entire life yeah well, I, I i will just say it was my entire life and, you know, like I always say to people, especially people who are young and want to be in this business, it's like, 
it's so great to be in the business and you lose so much. You lose a lot. Like you don't have a life in the way that you used to and things shift and change and like you go, no. you know, you move away from home, you lose relationships. So it is it, it, like, right. yes, it's great, but it does take over. Um, yeah. I was going to say, I don't know if everyone has no noticed this, but Lala has literally been in all of the iconic black series. <laughs> all of them. Okay. So let's do this countdown, right? Okay. So you were in Wu, Wu-Tang, right? Where are you on? So really, what else did you that was I was on the shy. Yes, I was on the shy as well. Uh-huh. Shout out and to then, Lee and the crew. And I got an NAACP award nomination for the shy for best guest performance. So I'm super excited about that. So yeah, I was on Wu Tang, the Shy, Power. Oh, Gronish. Shout out to Kenya Barris and the crew over there. Gronish as well. This is everything I was able to do once, you know, power was done. So like I said, I was able to kind of jump around. I, I hope I'm not missing anything, but I was able to jump around and just have some fun. That's awesome. Um, and I'm, I, I don't know if people even know this, but like, I will just say, you are a tremendous actor. Oh, you're you. wonderful. You're so talented. I can't thank wait you. to write for you again. Thank Maybe you. I'm writing for you right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love, absolutely love that. But thank you so much for, um, for saying that. It's true. No, you are. I mean, it's like, and, and you always improve all the material that we gave you. They you. gave um, Lakeisha warmth and heart and all the beautiful things. And I, I can't, literally can't wait to write for you. Um, because you. you know that project that we want to do together. Yes. About sure. being, being Black women <laughs> exactly. and what that means. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's going to be powerful. I'm excited for that. Courtney always has a trick up her sleeve. She always is writing something incredible and always, yeah, it's like a magician. She's always in the lab and I'm super excited to see what what comes out of it. And just, you know, when you call, I always I always tell you I'm I'm coming, I'm, I'm available, I'm ready. Oh, well, thank you. Daniel Bellamy would like us to say, we're ready. We're ready, we're yeah. ready, we're ready. <laughs> Wait, but I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was, I was watching, I was watching Force, obviously shout out to, you know, Joseph, Sakura who plays Tommy, amazing actor, amazing person, was like my by my side through all of the power years. But I was like, damn, so y'all can not even wait one episode before he was ready fucking the next bitch? Y'all can not even wait one? Y'all can not even give me one episode of him, like, grieving? <laughs> Already laid up. By the way, the actress on that show is incredible. She is amazing. I'm, I'm joking, guys, but I'm just saying, Damn, I couldn't even get one episode before he was already laid up with you. See, see how y'all guys do? You see how y'all guys do? <laughs> he was he was sad and he was sort of soothing himself with the embrace of a new woman. I don't know. You know, we talked about it. Look, I what I, my thing was, because we did talk about it, I did not want him falling in love. Right. I was okay. like, there is no love. He loves Lakeisha. That's it. He loves Lakeisha. He loves <laughs> Cash. He loves all the, he loves what he lost. And yeah. so that's why you see that in the commercial, in like mm -hmm. the, the trailer, that he's still in that place in his heart. Of but course. like, you know, <laughs> hidden is hidden. You know how, how these, these fellas are. You know how they are. Exactly. I was like, damn, I just got out of there. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, Force was amazing. Shout out to everybody watching it, and and Joe just just kills it like, like always. And I'm so excited to see the rest of that season. Uh, Raising Canaan, amazing. Powerbook, it, it, Powerbook Two. Michael Rainey, I'm uh, just mind blown by his talent and just who he is as a person. It just goes on and on and on. Like all these shows are just like you've taken over. There's like you've cornered every part of television. Like you've cornered it all. I don't even have time in the day to even watch anything else outside of what's under the power universe because there's so many amazing shows coming out of it oh thank you so much i really appreciate that i'm gonna i have to go grab melanie but before i go and grab her i did want to ask you one last thing which was what was your experience watching the super bowl were you, were you there or were you at home? i what you know it's so funny i wasn't there and i was like damn if i knew and everyone was like we thought you knew 50 was coming out and i'm like did 50 tell like he would have told me that but i don't i didn't know that was going to happen otherwise i would have went there because we did get kiana i did get invited but it was one of those fly to la come right back and i was just so exhausted i was like let's have a super bowl party and just hang but when I saw, you know, Mary obviously just complete shutdown performance kills it. Shut down. I'm like off the couch. Like 
I'm in a full concert in my living room. And then when 50 came down, I'm like, oh my God. Like it was just such a moment and so crazy. And I told Kayan, I was like, we should have got on that plane and we should have been there. But it was so incredible just to see. It was like, you know, power <laughs> in halftime of the Super Bowl. It was like, you can't escape the power universe. You can't escape us. It was amazing. It was like, because it was 50, it was Mary, it was also uh, uh, Kendrick, who was also a power exactly. alum. So it was exactly. crazy. Uh, it was crazy. And it was such an incredible halftime show. Like that made, obviously, for the football fans, it's about the football, but the halftime show made it for me. Like I was like, oh, this is just, this is epic. Like I was so tuned in. It was so good. It was, it was for us. It was for like people, yes. you know, our age, you're younger than me, but like people around our age. Yeah, of course. I knew, I knew every word, every song. It was, it was lit a hundred percent. I love you so much. When can I see I you? I love you. I, I got to come there. I got to go gotta to come York, here. Right? Come to New York. See, you guys get on the West Coast and everybody forgets about New York. Come to New York and hang out. I want to go eat. I really want to go have a drink. So let's, let's okay. do it. Okay, we're going to do both of those things. Eat and drink. All right, I got to, right. yeah, I have lots to All right. tell you about. Okay, all right. I, I, love, I you. love you. I'll talk Bye, to you everybody. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Okay, so Melanie Liebert, I need you to resend your request. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, and while we're waiting for Melanie to enter, I have some great questions for her. Yay! Yay! Melanie! <laughs> You two were just cracking me up. That was so good. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good. It's, I love the braids. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's funny. You were talking about braids and I did the opposite. I wore my hair curly in um, Ghost for like two seasons and I love my curly hair, but it, it's, um, I've gone into another show now and uh, braids. So, yeah. Braid life is so much easier, isn't it? It's so easy. I love it. Love it. <laughs> Would Lala love to try your products though. Look. <laughs> No, it's going to be amazing because, like, the edges. Okay, so mm. I want to talk to you about so many things. The first okay. thing is, yeah. uh, can you tell us what you're on now? Are you, is, are you allowed to tell us? Yes. I'm, in a, um, I'm on a show called The Idol on HBO. Um, and uh, the, weekend and the Weekend producing it with Sam Levinson. And uh, it's just really exciting. So I'm enjoying it. It's so different. I mean, it's so different to... Um, ghost and it's just I was listening to what Lala was saying about it's so lovely to play different characters and you like I got so attached to Carrie I loved Carrie so <laughs> hard <laughs> and then um but it, it, it's so lovely to play another character so yeah it's, I'm really enjoying it I um I'm so glad I'm really excited I love it please come on anytime and plug um yes for those of you who are saying oh my god her voice is different yes melanie Liebert is from the uk everyone <laughs> surprise surprise hi guys <laughs> would, would you like to tell them sort of like how you got to power because i'm sure now they're like oh we didn't know she was british so yeah um how i got to power well i remember um and i'd heard so much about the show i'd heard about you and what you created of course and um because i'd worked with lala and i worked with lala on a job years ago um on a movie called double play and of course like i knew that she was on power and i saw the i remember seeing the billboards in new york and i'll never forget like they were just gigantic and i was like wow that's lala i was just working with her like and it was this massive billboard. It was just amazing. And then my agent said, oh, um, Courtney would like a call with you. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Courtney Kev, what? Of course. Like, lovely. And I just remember talking to you, and you were so lovely. And, you know, just so easy to talk to. And just the character, just like Carrie, just seemed so interesting and so complex and nuanced that I was just sold. I was so excited. So... Well, thank you for the compliment. I, I, I created Carrie kind of, we talked about, we wanted to talk about sex addiction, female sex addiction, because people uh, do sort of male sex addiction all the time and really love addiction and all those things. Um, and then it's funny because of course, you know, we, it, it really worked out in season two. You know, technically Davis McLean is not, not a sex addict. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I, I really See, love that going those back those men on that show get away with murder, but Carrie, she took a lot of, she took a lot of slack being she a did. woman. She took a lot. I think. 
And that is, yeah, that's real to what women go through, I think, which Absolutely. is the standard's always different for us. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Tell me, how, what was it like to work with Method Man? Cliff, amazing. I mean, what's so lovely about working with Cliff, he comes in and he just wants to talk about the character and um, about, he's just very excited and such a high energy. Um, it's funny because I saw Shane posted something on set and he was doing, he was like rapping, doing a little, like getting into a, I don't know if he was getting into character, but he was just having a great time. And that was working with Cliff. I was like, oh my God, that sums it up. Every time he was always making a joke, always messing around on set. And always so professional, but he just made it such a great environment to work in, you know. So he's so sweet, so sweet. We were, we, we were getting one missing from the, the halftime Super Bowl show. I was like, where's Cliff? <laughs> <laughs> where's Cliff? <laughs> I know, that would have been amazing. That would have been way less West Coast, right, though? You always <laughs> yeah. start to, like, I know Mary's there, but it's like once yeah. you put, you know, Cliff in, it's like New York represent, right? Um, yeah. So the, uh, some of the fans are asking for you to do an American accent. And what I would ask is, can you tell us how to do an American accent? Like, how do you do it? Oh, how? Um, oh, my God. You're making me switch into American right now. But um, it's funny. I thought I could do an American accent because I, I was studying in the UK and I thought I could do an American accent. And then I came to America and went, oh, no. Oh, no, you've got a lot of work to do. Because <laughs> there are so many accents. And it's like the UK, there are so many accents everywhere. But um, I think you have to just choose kind of one person to study when you first start so it doesn't throw you. So it, for the act, my acting, my advice to actors would be like to choose an actress um, and really study that one actress or actor and um, and just the nuances and getting your... Uh, the way I, I, I step into my accent is like Brits speak all from the front and Americans speak all from the back. And I feel like to step into my American accent, I just let everything go to mush. <laughs> that makes sense. Like everything's just looser. Like it's, um, like it's, like it's uh, paralyzed, like it's just gone numb. So my tongue just kind of goes... Ugh. Whereas Brits are like, blah, blah, blah. Brits are doing too much. That's the, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, love, I love that expression for British doing too much. It is forward. Like when I try to fake a yeah. British accent, it's always like yeah. up front. But yeah. I'm not an actor, so I don't know. But it's um, funny, I was talking to someone recently about my American accent. And especially on our show, I used to, without even knowing, because I've been doing it so long, and I've always played an American. I think there's been one job where I haven't, where I've been in my own uh english accent but every time like we'd get picked up as soon as i got in the van that picked me up i was american and as soon as i got out of the van i was british and it and i was like oh my god i didn't even realize i was doing that but it just became such a thing that really helps to let go of the character at the end of the day and step into the character so yeah oh that's i mean that's that's awesome i like i like that sort of like turning it off you know what i mean like having a oh yeah having and having like a, a kind of a separation between um, Melanie and Carrie, <laughs> right? Because yes. Carrie is up to no good. And yeah. Melanie is a serious actor who is, you know, <laughs> doing her homework. All right, yeah. I wanted to ask you, what, um, what was it like to work with Mary and how did you feel about Monet killing Carrie at the end? Oh, it was amazing to work with Mary. And um, of course I thought, oh my God, it's Mary. She's the queen, she was amazing. And it was one moment and I don't, well, yeah, I don't, and what episode was it where she held the gun to my head in the car? Oh, uh, that's 204, I want to say. Oh, I think you're amazing. You're amazing to remember. I get so confused. You're amazing how you remember everything, of course, because you write it, but still. Um, and, she, and we were doing this scene and I was crying. I was like, it was a really full on, like, traumatic scene. And because uh, she, like, had this real, and they gave her a real gun to hold to my head. And halfway through, she goes, Melanie you're on Game of Thrones. That's my favorite show. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're Mary. Stop it. <laughs> but she's the sweetest, generous, lovely person to work with. Like the absolute, such, such a kind heart. It was such a pleasure to work with her. It really was. But she's the greatest. And I mean, yeah. people don't know, obviously, because she's the queen, but she is yeah. so wonderful and generous. And she's a huge TV fan. When I first met yeah. Mary, you know, I'm like, 
kind of like, oh my God, I'm going to be married, but I have to be cool. Cause like, I'm also saying I'm going to write a part for you. So I got to be cool. She yeah. was like, oh, I love power. And I know all these things about power. She is, she is like a television watcher. You know, the reason that I have even seen, cause I don't watch a lot of TV or I didn't before cause I was too busy. Mm -hmm. Mary introduced me to Snowfall. How about that? Mary oh, J. Blige yeah. was like, you need to watch Snowfall. Damn, <laughs> yeah. We have the so same great. manager, we went to the same drama school. Yeah, it's crazy. It's such a small world, but yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna, uh, I know it's, uh, it's sort of, I'm doing it a lot today, but I, and I have Daniel Bellamy coming in soon. But before I leave, um, before we, we let you go off to the world of not being alive on power anymore, can you, <laughs> tell, me what your, can you tell me what your favorite scene was that you shot on the show? Um, oh, with Michael, so many with Michael, so many with Daniel, because Daniel's the sweetest. I mean, me and Daniel would sit there and go, oh my God, we've got to do a love scene, but the sweetest. We're all like a family on the show, so we're like talking each other down, like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> but um, so many moments, so many. Like, I had some great moments with Paige, because she's the sweetest too. And oh my God, I never got to work with Latoya, but I saw the work that they all did at that dining room scene. And I was so proud of them all because really, we really did connect. And I think it was a part of, you know, being on a show and being in COVID and we wouldn't have usually got that time to hang with each other, but because, you know, everyone was a bit frightened of the world and what was out there. We all just kind of clung together and hung out together and went around each other's apartments and had dinner. And um, so I love those guys and I'm so grateful for them all. Yeah, they were, yeah. I mean, you guys were such a great crew. I was so sad because I was like far away and I wasn't part of your little COVID bubble. <laughs> I was like so yeah. jealous. <laughs> um, you well, thank yeah. you so much for your time. I love you oh, so much. I can't wait to work with you, you again. I know, Good luck I know we're going to work show. together again. And thank you so much. I had so much fun. It was great. <laughs> thank you. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. 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 Oh. Okay, so now, awesome. Now I have to look for a, uh, a request. Daniel, if you can send your request again, that would be great. Um, there we go. Um, so I'm so enjoying hanging out with you guys and just having these great conversations with our friends from Beyond the Grave. What's up? There you are. Doing. Oh, I'm yeah. ready. How about that? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. So yeah. I guess the first thing we have to talk about is, is Zeke really dead? <laughs> uh, I think Zeke is dead. <laughs> <laughs> he made, made, I think he woke up in heaven. I think he did too. I think Zeke yeah. actually really deserved heaven. Of the people on our show, Zeke deserves heaven. Zeke goes yeah. to heaven for sure. He's climbing up them stair the, that stairway. Exactly. As steep as the stairway it carries, right? Ooh, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was a crazy scene. That was a steep scene. I mean, I feel like people people were kind of like, you know, I mean, it was, they were excited and there's so much drama, but it was, that was deep. You know, that was deep. You know, that was deep, you know, for Zeke to find her, you know, uh, hanging in the, hanging in, in her room right after Right after you know, uh, finding out about his mom, his auntie mommy, you know, and, and <laughs> right, and finding that he was, uh, you know, was it four years older than yeah. he thought he was. So he, you know, it, the, the enemy came in like a flood for Zeke. The enemy came <laughs> I think it's interesting. So, how has the journey of playing Zeke been for you? Because I know it's been. Uh, the people all have, I love that all the, the comments are, I'm ready. I love that the people are doing that in the comments. Yes, I'm ready as well. Um, they're, ready. <laughs> they're ready. They're ready. They're ready. Um, what has been like the experience of playing Zeke? Because I know that people have gone all over the place with him, you know, being mad that he is a little slower because obviously he's not, you know, his job is for the ball in the hoop or now being supportive of him. Like poor Zeke, everyone came for him. How has it been? It's been amazing. I, honestly, it was. It's thank you so much. It, it was. It, it's been an opportunity of a lifetime, you know, um, to to play Z, to to embrace his his voice, his character. He's. I don't, I never saw him as stupid. I I think that he, you know, like he's misinformed. Like you know, what I'm saying 
he he doesn't know what's going on, so he looks stupid. But you know, I I, I I'm not gonna say he's stupid. Maybe 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 whatever. But um, uh, it's it's been it's been it was honestly a completely transformative experience, like from start to finish. Um, you know, working not just with Zeke, but work on the power working in the power universe working with you know all the amazing professionals creatives individuals i mean it it's every step of it was just like you know it, it's just amazing really yeah i'm glad that you had a great time you know you came in and you killed your audition and Thank we just you did and we needed somebody who would kind of because we knew zeke was um monet's real son from the beginning right yeah. so it was like we want to get I'm somebody who I, what did I tell you? You told me at the table read the first day, the first day of the table read. You kind of like, you okay. kind of like, bomb and we were all like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. <laughs> dope. Um, I know that Mary had like lovely things to say about working with you because she definitely told me. How was your experience working with her? It was honestly like after the first half of the experience of being totally starstruck <laughs> and in love with her, <laughs> like, and she smells so good, everybody. She really smells really good. <laughs> and Toya is kind of now, she's jocking off her smell. Toya, yes, you are. I know she's out here. Um, but, you know, she, she, Mary, she just, she just, she's just a G, you know, she a boss, she a queen, you know, she's just, she just, she been in it and she, and she's still in it. You know, for her to be, you know, performing in the Super Bowl, you know, starring in the, in the, um, in the, in a hit show, you know, what I'm saying um, the premiere of of the season one, season two, you know, she was rocking the red carpet, and then the day after, she was doing, you know, her show at the Barclays Center. I know. know. My mom it was to go to that, and it was dope, you know. So, it, what is it like to work with Mary? I mean, it's 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 been a treat. It's been a dream come true. Yeah. I, I will say the same thing, that it was a dream come true for me as well. And she is such a dynamo. And she does smell really good, actually. <laughs> it's a very good point. So good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell me about, tell me about uh, I'm Ready. When did you record that? Like, tell me all that. Yeah. So honestly, like, you know, this experience has been a huge blessing. It's, it's opened so many doors, um, so many opportunities. You know, I remember... I think it was episode season one, season one, episode eight, when I was sitting at the tape read, and Mary had fi already found out that I knew our, that, that I could sing or whatever. And she was like, so what's next? An album? And I remember, like, you know, in that moment, like, being like, oh, God, ugh, I got to I gotta press forward because she said something, you know what I'm saying? I don't, if I don't do something, I'm going to look like a fool, you know? And so, like, really from, like, I mean, beyond before that I was working and grinding towards, you know, realizing the process for, you know, uh, sharing more of my creativity. But I think it was in those moments like that, that really kind of pushed me off the cliff and, and got me going like, uh, you know, to, to, to just, you know, to just to record and, and, and exploring in that space. Yeah, I mean, that's actually great. The idea that, that Mary encouraged you, you know, to have yeah. basically one of the icons of music say to you yeah. so where's your album at <laughs> <laughs> right like yo you know it's like okay well let me let me go find it <laughs> and, and <laughs> i'm grateful that i'm able to release it and share it with everyone um we just comment. had a comment someone said this is the the quickest i've ever seen zeke talk and i was i wanted to say to them daniel is an actor that is not <laughs> actually him that you're seeing <laughs> he's actually not mary's son in real life that's okay <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that people, you know, were so convinced um, at his, um, you know, one of the words that you guys gave to me was innocence, you know, easily, impre easily um, impressionable. Um, I think it was, um, it was, it was a couple more that just sort of inferred his sort of, um, he, he trusts easily, you know, he's, he's going to, um, you know, you know, so that 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 I, I really wanted to honor, you know, that 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 part of his you know, in terms of his character, you know. Yeah, I think that you did a beautiful job of yeah. honoring someone who has not been taught to think for yeah. himself. And that that was so beautiful, especially in that scene where he asked Monet, did you have something to do with Carrie? Because, oh. you know, it took him all his little courage, right? <laughs> Oh, that was so cold. She was just lying to him. 
<laughs> Poor Zeke. Zeke has had a rough road. That's why I'm saying he's in heaven right now. Yeah. Um, and I did, I did like the meme that was like, like him in heaven, and he was like, Carrie, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Kind of so great. So many memes, and um, you know, shout out to Rising Stars. That's a, a organization that I'm using. Um, you know, all the memes they they create. They they gave Zeke a, a life of his own in the metaverse. Z e e k e, you know, z e e e k, z e e. It was all 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 these different all these different variations of this uh, persona, and so. You know, um, we actually did a, did, you know, just did an NFT uh, pre-sale, sold out. You know, we give, we're give giving Zeke to the metaverse. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we letting them have them. You know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's going to be some kind of memorial or something, you know, come soon. You know, so they'll, they'll, they'll be, they'll still have a piece of him, you know. Yeah, Zeke, Zeke's legacy continues in the show, even though, yes, confirming he is dead. His legacy does continue in the show because everyone is affected by that death. Monet more than anyone. Uh, right. she, she blames Diana. So let me ask you something. How, how do you feel about that, Daniel Bellamy? Do you blame Please. Diana uh -huh. for Zeke's death? And, 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 you know, people are also blaming Toya, which I'm like, Toya didn't write it. <laughs> I, you know what, you know what, she gonna be mad at me. She gonna be mad at me. But I don't. I'm not gonna say it's Diana's fault because, you know, she is also a youth. You know, she also is, you know, a little clouded by her own innocence. You, you know what I'm saying? So, and she, you know, she wanted to get the 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 truth that she needed out. You know. Um, so, like most young people or youth, you, you know, young young adults do or whatever, but. You know, I think it's Monet's fault, you know, that Zeke is dead. <laughs> you know, like she, you know, she, she, uh, that's on her. That's on her. That's on Monet. <laughs> okay. So I have to just tell everybody, uh, my assistant Malika is on right now and she just wrote Diana stirred the pot. That was like, girl, you were part of breaking. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to put on Diane. I don't think Zeke would want Diane to feel like it was her fault. He would not. Zeke would not want that, right? Zeke would want yeah. her to feel okay because he loves yeah. his baby cousin. Right. <laughs> y'all funny when y'all threw that line in there, baby cousin. Y'all funny. <laughs> um, how was working with Emeka Okafor? Emeka Okafor. It was amazing. He was so kind. He was so kind. He was so um, so professional, so, um, so intelligent, you know, so humble. Um, you know, so interested in the process of filming and how it related to his process of being an NBA superstar. And it was, I mean, just to be able to, you know, be on a hit show with an NBA superstar. Like, I, I remember when it be, you know, we first we thought it was going to be somebody else. I'm not going to say who it was. But, you know, I, I was like, oh, shoot, I had, to, I had, you know, like I was already practicing and training you know, for my my, sh my my one take basketball shot, you know what I'm saying? I do play basketball, but like, you know, you know still, you know, but I I remember I, I got, I was like, I gotta be ready. I gotta, I gotta prepare. I gotta, sh you know, I gotta show up. I'm not playing around, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta put these basketball videos out. They gotta, you know. <laughs> it's <gonna> <laughs> So it was it was amazing. It was honestly it was like it was like I said it was such a transformative experience. It was it was just it was everything. It was everything. And and it, and it, and 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 it was it was just enough, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the sky's the limit for you. You're an incredibly you. talented actor. I'm so glad that the people are seeing what you're actually like on this live. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you seek at all. Hey, you know um, Oh, Zeke was cool. He he was just in a he was just in the wrong place, you know. He just had it tough. He was cool though. <laughs> I, I, um, stand, I stand for Zeke. I we all stand for Zeke. Yeah. I look forward to working with you again in the future, my friend. And thank you. Let's do this again when you have more stuff coming out. Let's yes. do this again. Yes, yes. Much love to you. Thank you so much. It, it's thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, it, it, it's just been a complete blessing. Oh, well, you are a blessing in my life. I appreciate you, too. Have a great Thank night. You. you, too. All right. So I think I have a couple more questions, and then I think we should end our live.
Um, okay, so will Tariq give Diana the cold shoulder next season? It's going to be very interesting to see where, how Tariq and Diana cross, especially given that they did sleep together. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be interested in the fact that they slept together. Um, I wonder how Effie's going to feel about that. That's going to be really interesting, huh? Um, let's see. Any other questions? Oh, goodness. Okay. I didn't get to ask this to the, these guys, but I will tell you guys. When did the actors know they were going to be killed off and what was their reaction? And I did not get a chance to ask these two guys this, but I can tell you guys both uh, that Melanie figured it out really early. Melanie asked me in like episode two, she was like, I'm going to die this season, aren't I? Um, and I think with, uh, with Daniel, we had already kind of, we were thinking about doing it and then we did it, but we told him just a little before um, and he was just too, super great about it. You know, it, it, it is kind of a tradition on power that really good people sometimes die. Like if you're really, really good, really good on the inside, uh, you probably got a bullet with your name on it. So, uh, but he was really lovely. Um, and let's see, any other questions? Um, oh, hey, uh, worth the wait, one, uh, zero, 1028. Did Monet set Carrie's death up to look like a suicide? Yes, she did. Um, Mesh Gov 19, will Effie and Tariq become the king and queen of New York? Stay tuned. Uh, let's see. Um, M.O., is it safe to say that no one in the power universe has a normal life? No one goes on dates? I don't know what that means. I mean, are you talking about on the, on the show? I mean, no, people are too busy moving weight to go on a date. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, can you talk to us about a deleted scene? I think this is a great way to end, actually, this whole season of doing these lives. Because um, this is the last one, you guys. This is the last one I'm going to be doing. Um, and I want to thank you again for those of you who've been coming all along. It's been really uh, wonderful to be able to talk to the fans and talk to you guys about things. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess when I think about deleted scenes or scenes that we took out of the show, there are always scenes that uh, were, you know, they weren't really necessary, right? That's why you didn't get to see them. But in terms of scenes that I guess that I kind of wish uh, had lived. Certainly, um, you know, there were, there was a longer version of the ghost and Tommy uh, death scene that we could have done, uh, where uh, ghost and Tommy had a little bit longer to talk. There was definitely that version. Um, I would say, you know, I, there are all these missed opportunities with, with dead folks. Uh, one thing that I never got to do was I never really got to cross um, Anika Noni Rose's character jukebox with Tasha. I never got to get more of those relationships together. Uh, that would have been nice to do. But again, as, as some of you guys know, the reason that we had to kill jukebox off was that Anika had to go be in the quad. It was not just uh, that it was time for the character to go. Um, as for someone said, can I release the scenes? Let's see. Can I release the scenes that were uh, Dontavious Jackson, release the scenes that didn't make it? I have no control over that. I, I have asked for years, actually, for us to be able to do cut scenes, scenes that were shot and, and uh, deleted, um, because they're not really deleted. They're in the cut, and then we take them out, but they still exist. We shot them. Um, and so, yeah, I've asked stars before uh, multiple times. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but maybe someday I'll just watch them all and tell you guys the story. We'll have story time on here. Um, all right, well, this has been lovely. I really appreciate you all so much. Um, and, uh, oh, someone asked Jukebox and you, Tasha. No, I wanted her to cross with Tasha. I wanted Jukebox and Tasha to cross once Jukebox had uh, kidnapped Tariq, if that makes a sense, because Tasha would have had something to say about that. Um, okay. And I, uh, on that, thank you guys for all the compliments about my hair. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for all your amazing questions. And, uh, for those of you who guessed that Zeke was going to die, those of you who guessed that Zeke was Monet's son, those of you who guessed that Mecca was going to die, those of you who thought Carrie, um, and Monet would have a fight and that Monet would win, uh, those of you who thought Tariq was going to get arrested, those of you who thought Kane was going to bring that body up. I mean, there were some of you guys who really asked questions that were like dead on. Someone actually asked in the comments once, 
is Cain going to have Brayden help him raise the body? And I had to look at the name to see if it was someone who worked in our writer's room. Uh, you guys are the greatest fans ever. You're the greatest fans ever of all time. And we appreciate you so much. I can say for the crew and the cast and everybody at Ghost, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a great night.